Howdy, howdy. Why? When it comes to fast food, I believe there is one source we can absolutely trust. Obviously not the commercials, but the overworked, underpaid employees making the food. They have nothing to hide. So let's look at the 10 fast foods the staff say we should never order. And just a reminder, I'm not personally saying I think you should never order these foods. These are just the opinions of some fast food employees, and certainly not all fast food employees. In fact, I'll finish off all of these with my own opinion. Based on my own experience of working with restaurants like Subway, KFC, and Domino's. But still, take this list with a grain of salt. Anyway, time's a wasted. Let's begin. For our entree, here's number 10. KFC Potato and Gravy. Fun fact, back when I used to work at KFC, I was often assigned to make the potato and gravy. But I've heard the process grosses out some people, so I've rarely ever explained how it's made to anyone else. Particularly since a lot of people enjoy potato and gravy. But some KFC staff swear off potato and gravy after they see the process of making it. Some staff have even shocked customers just explaining the recipe. Happy Eight Day is a KFC worker, and he summed it up pretty well in his comments. KFC gravy is just the bottom of the deep fryer with seasoning in it. And, well, yeah, that's about it. The process of how it's made is demonstrated well in this TikTok video. Basically, we start by gathering up the leftovers from the bottom of the chicken fryer, also known as chicken drippings or crackling. Basically, the bits of chicken fat and bone left over in the deep fryer. We fill this crackling with water and potato powder, and that's about it. Heat it up and voila! KFC Potato and Gravy. When this TikTok hit the internet, some people were really put off KFC's Potato and Gravy. In fact, enough of a stir was made that KFC spoke out about their signature gravy recipe to News Corp. Our famous mouth-watering gravy is made the old-fashioned way, and is another one of the Colonel's famous recipes. We proudly serve it to our customers. It may sound disgusting to some people, but interestingly, this is how gravy has been made for hundreds of years. And a lot of commenters pointed this out too. Personally, if I use gravy, I tend to just use instant gravy mix. So I've never seen this traditional cooking process outside of KFC. But I looked it up and saw the gravy making process done by Gordon Ramsay in what he called the ultimate gravy mix. And like KFC, he used the leftover chicken drippings. And if even Gordon Ramsay can't make it classy, I think gravy is just gross by nature. But many customers and workers don't care at all. For example, in my own community, Hypersonic Editor said, I worked at KFC and their potatoes slap. I know how they're cooked, but that gravy can't be beat. Ugh, not my thing personally, but more power to you if you like it. Number 9. Ah. Decaf Coffee. Ugh, oh, I can attest to this one. I'm no stranger to ordering decaf coffee. In fact, Nin and I often enjoy going down to the food court to order a decaf and have a nice quick business meeting. But when it comes to fast food joints, can we actually trust what we're getting is actually decaf? You'd think when you order a decaf coffee, you'd get a decaf coffee, but sometimes you don't. But it really depends where you go. For a time at McDonald's, the elusive decaf coffee went incognito. Turns out the decaf was such a rare order that they didn't even bother featuring it on the menu. But then in 2020, decaf was meant to come back onto the menu at McDonald's. Regarding this, a spokesman from McDonald's said, The tastes of our customers are diversifying, and the demand for decaffeinated drinks is increasing. So we now would like to offer you decaf coffee. Yay! But unfortunately, many McDonald's weren't so keen to bother to diversify. An employee soon spilled the beans. The coffee beans. <laughs> uh. According to How Nation, Burger King doesn't bother brewing any decaf coffee. At How Nation's restaurant, he said, If someone orders decaf, management trains us to water down regular coffee. Yeah! And I've also experienced this firsthand at McDonald's. I don't have caffeine myself, I run on anxiety. That's rough, buddy. But once I was out at 8 p.m. and ordered a large decaf latte, I was instead given a large triple shot latte. Maccas didn't even bother to tell me they didn't even serve decaf. They didn't even water it down for me. And have you ever tried giving a triple caffeine shot to someone who doesn't drink caffeine? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm sad. It was ugly, man. Needless to say, I've never ordered a decaf coffee at a fast food joint again. 
Hopefully you won't have the same experience, but I can't say I or some other staff ever recommend you order a decaf. We serve food here, sir. And number eight. Fast food beans. When I asked my own community what fast food staff never order, one particular choice came up more than anything else. Staff working at Taco Bell said they never order Taco Bell beans. It's one of my favorite condiments on my Taco Bell bowl with no mayo. But so many staff complained about the Taco Bell beans. One staff member named Tavern Dragon said, I don't ever eat anything with beans from Taco Bell. Let's just say it's easy to prep. Then Wiki Dreamer commented, My hubby used to work at Taco Hell. He said to avoid the bean burrito and anything with shredded chicken. Then Gavin chimed in, Taco Bell here? I don't order anything related to beans. They can get so old. When not stirred, they get this gross film on them. Most of the stuff at the Bell is fine, but I stay away from the beans. Then TJ chimed in too. Their comment was, I worked at Taco Bell and I will never eat anything with their beans. It's just dried pellets that we add boiling water to. It somehow becomes something resembling beans. Wait, that's it? That's a controversy? It's just dried beans that become regular beans when hydrated? Oh come on, that doesn't sound so bad. Despite so many Taco Bell employees complaining about them, no one actually fully explained to me what was wrong with the beans, so I investigated. I managed to find a TikTok video exposing Taco Bell's beans recipe, but I was pretty underwhelmed. I could be wrong, but it appears the staff were upset about what TJ mentioned that the refried beans are dehydrated when packaged and then boiled. But based on the comments of this video, this seems to bother more staff than customers. For example, one of the highest comments was from Mallory. She said, You can buy beans like this at food supply stores too. It's not new. They're just dehydrated, refried beans. And I completely agree. Astronauts would rely heavily on this dehydration process and they need every nutrient they can get. And it's like magic. Dried spinach, and spinach ready to eat. It doesn't make the food bad just because the water's taken out and put back in. It's just more efficient and more hygienic for a conglomerate. After all, water can lead to mold and bacteria. Honestly, if you can taste something different about the beans, you've got a better taste palate than I. But in my opinion, beans are one of the healthiest things you can get in a fast food menu. So for Pete's sake, don't restrict yourself from beans just because of how they're prepared. And number seven, Subway tuna. Many people are quite familiar with the tuna sandwich. I've certainly ordered it before. Tuna itself is a very healthy fish packed with protein and good fats. Fish itself is the most vitamin packed healthy protein you can have. So why don't Subway employees eat the tuna sandwich? Well, according to a Subway employee named Karma Virus, Tuna sandwiches. 80% mayonnaise. His biggest problem with the tuna is that it wasn't tuna, or maybe 20% tuna. His bigger problem was the copious amounts of mayonnaise that morsel of tuna was swimming in. And personally, my stomach doesn't handle mayonnaise well, and I've struggled with Subway tuna for this very reason. I get this because when I order a tuna sandwich, I want tuna, not a mayonnaise sandwich. In my own personal experience working at Subway, it wasn't 80% mayonnaise, more like 50% mayonnaise on my shift. But nowadays I can't stand mayonnaise, so I just skip it altogether. The situation against Subway got a lot worse though when there was a lawsuit against them for their tuna. And this lawsuit was from an ex-Subway employee. Wow, he really didn't like the tuna. They claimed that the tuna Subway used had no trace of fish at all. 0%? That's a bold claim. Plaintiff Armin said, Subway has completely misled customers with their claim of 100% tuna. I don't like it. Armin even went to the trouble of getting this Subway tuna tested for tuna DNA. Their findings were that in 19 out of 20 samples, absolutely no tuna DNA sequences were discovered. But there were traces of other animal DNA, such as chicken and pork. Is that guy for real? I mean though, cross-contamination isn't a big surprise. In busy times, I have seen sandwich makers drop food from one bin to another, in a rush to make many orders in a row. But containing zero fish was definitely more of a surprise. Following the filing of this lawsuit, jokes on social media inevitably began popping up. Jessica Simpson is apparently known for not knowing the difference between chicken and tuna. I know it's tuna, but 
it, it says chicken. She tweeted, It's okay, Subway. It is confusing. And a staff member from my community had a similar sentiment on the tuna. Season Evergreen said, I used to work for Subway and I do not order the tuna. It's not actually tuna. It's just a soy product. In all of the uproar, Subway finally released a statement to the New York Times. Their statement was, There is simply no truth to the California allegations. Subway delivers 100% cooked tuna to its restaurants, which is mixed with mayonnaise. Yeah, like 50 to 80% mayonnaise. Personally, I think how much mayonnaise is used will vary a lot depending on what Subway you go to. For example, this staff member named Subway used a lot less mayonnaise than others. While these staff seem to be trying to cause customers death by mayonnaise. Anyway, soy, chicken or tuna, I think Subway should at least be clear on what food they're giving their customers. Mm. Tastes like chicken. Number 6. Baseball Stadium Hot Dogs America is known for some interesting national prides. And one of the more unusual ones to me is baseball. In fact, it's one of the top five most popular sports in America. No, dump the title. This isn't a new top list. Who would watch that? Anyway, it seems many Americans remember going to the ballpark, watching their favorite team, and munching on a nice foot-long hot dog. So why would I be stupid enough to bring baseballs and hot dogs into this list? Well, staff seem less concerned how they're manufactured, and more concerned how they're stored. Let's go behind the scenes to our happy little hot dogs in their package. They're grilled and then popped into water to keep warm for when ordered. But staff member claim this water can be days or even weeks old. You could say these employees have spilled the water. <laughs> Did you write that? Yeah, keep trying. Anyway, in an article from Min Q, one employee said, Stadium hot dogs are kept hydrated in warm water at the stadium. Any unsold dogs, and water for that matter, are kept in the fridge ready for the next event. There was another review from Freaky Cheese Man on Reddit. And with a name like Freaky Cheese Man, how can we not trust him? He said, Don't buy the hot dogs. They make it out of the package fine, and they're probably still edible when we grill them. But once they hit the water, who knows how old the water is? We try to put our foot down and throw it out after three days, but management tells us not to. So yeah, according to some staff, this delightful meaty treat could have been sitting in month-old water by the time it's served to you. One day, one month, who knows? But if I may give my personal opinion, who freaking cares? Technically, all the water we drink is recycled. In fact, every glass of water we have is 3.8 billion years old. It's just been recycled and cleaned for our drinking. So as long as it's clean water with no bacteria, who really cares how old it is? Technically, we're drinking the same water as the dinosaurs were 230 million years ago. Who really cares if it's a day or a month old? Besides, if the hot dog water is sufficiently hot, wouldn't any bacteria be killed off anyway? Well, according to the Department of Health, boiling water does seem to indeed kill bacteria. If that's the case, it may as well be new water. Personally, I think if stadium hot dogs haven't given you any stomach aches so far, you're perfectly fine to enjoy them in moderation. They're not healthy buggers and they're potential choking hazards to kids, but the hot dog water itself is very unlikely to poison you. And for number five, Hot box food. Yeah, I remember hot box food working at Domino's. Once we cooked your pizza, it was cut, boxed up, and put into the hot box to keep warm until you picked it up. The same thing is done with other fast food joints like at KFC. But what happens to food that's been in the hot box for too long? According to USDA food standards, takeaway food that's been cooked should be kept in an internal temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius or above. Or a 333 Kelvin. <laughs> And anything that's been in the hot box for too long needs to be discarded. But staff claim that some of this hot box food has been reheated. There was one source that told Reader's Digest, 
After we cook something, we put it in the hot box and set a timer. When the timer goes off, we are meant to throw it out, but management tells us to reheat it instead. And this doesn't surprise me that much that this happens sometimes. I remember I used to pick up a quick feed from my local shopping center, and sometimes the fries in the hot box would be hard and chewy. Many times I wondered how many hours the chips had been sitting there. Anyway, this staff member went on to say, For the freshest food, it's best to visit between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. for lunch, and between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. for dinner. This is the busiest times, so it is more likely your food will be fresh. I remember managing hotbox food from my own service station and pizza days. Our hotbox food did have strict times we had to throw it out. But sometimes when we're busy, we did forget to throw it out. But I didn't serve these forgotten pizzas to customers. Many of our customers could tell when a pizza was more than an hour old and were more than happy to tell us if a pizza didn't taste fresh. And I found customers were angry enough as is with late pizzas, so I generally try to cook them as fresh a pizza as possible. And I always kept my hot box food at the service station a strict 65 degrees Celsius, or 149 Fahrenheit. And bacteria is killed above 60 degrees Celsius, so you're very unlikely to get food poisoning from old hot box food. But it might taste a bit chewier and more bland, and you definitely deserve better. But personally, in my experience, I always tried my very best to give you something fresh. Yeah! Number 4. Fast Food Chili If you ask Wendy's customers, many will agree that chili is a great comfort food. Going back nearly 50 years, Wendy's chili has been an old favorite. But when you ask Wendy's staff, some will tell you their chili is a no-go. But why don't staff like their chili? Well, originally, Dave Thomas, Wendy's creator, didn't intend to have chili on the menu at all. His plan was just to sell burgers, fries, and frosty desserts. But the chili just kind of happened. You see, Dave started making burgers with a mission to only use fresh meat. In fact, he proudly stated this. Since day one, we've been serving up our fresh, never frozen hamburgers. No frozen pucks or pre-cooked patties here. Unlike what the other guys are serving up. Oh, come on! But you might ask, what does this have to do with chili? Well, in a lunch rush at a fast food joint, many burgers have to be cooked in advance. This ensures the lines keep moving and the burgers are ready to go. But at the end of the rush, what do they do with all the leftovers? Yep, it's leftover meat burger patties that are Wendy's famous chili. Now, honestly, to me, this doesn't sound so bad. I think it's a clever way to save on wasting fresh meat. And it's not like they scrape the patty off a half-eaten burger to reuse in the chili. It's not even a health concern to use this meat in another dish. A parent might do this as well so their kids can have a nice protein dinner the next day. So why does staff have a problem with this? Apparently it's not the meat itself, but the preparing after. A former employee and Reddit user Cosmo23 said, They take the leftover patties and put them in a bin. They are then stored in the fridge until they make the chili. They then boil it, chop it up, and dump it in the chili. Apparently this process isn't just used at Wendy's, but other fast food joints as well. I also found a comment from a former Checkers employee named Duct Tape Chainsaw. I do hope his name tag said that. Anyway, he said, I would never in a bazillion years eat fast food chili. It's basically just the past few days unsold burger meat cooked into a chili. Not to mention the chili was never actually thrown out. It was just replenished with the next batch. So in reality, you could be eating last month's meat. Hey, can I throw up in your bathroom? This was just at one local Wendy's though. Hopefully your local Wendy's does follow health guidelines and throws out their leftover patties often. And I don't see any health risks to chili, particularly when the meat is refrigerated and boiled after to kill any bacteria. I guess some people just find chili kind of gross. And next up we've got number three, the Philado fish. For some reason, everyone seems to have something against this poor fish burger. Mash claimed it was the one McDonald's item that staff never order. Even McDonald's themselves advertised it as killing a British kid's dad in one of their banned commercials. 
I mean, it was the dad's favourite menu item. Even the former McDonald's CEO, Ray Kroc, notoriously disliked the fillet fish and tried to replace it with a pineapple burger instead. But it may not surprise you that Ray's pineapple burger did not sell as well as the fillet fish So in many articles, staff seem to attest to the non-freshness of fillet fish One staff member called The Fixius said, I promise you that the fillet of fish is not fresh by any stretch of the imagination. Some McDonald's staff claim that due to its lack of popularity, the fillet fish can sit for a long time in the warming area until it's ordered. It's nothing to do with the fish itself though or how it's farmed. McDonald's says they use Alaska Pollock from Certified Sustainable Fisheries. From my research anyway, the fillet's fine. But a lot of staff seem to say the fillet could have been sitting stale in the hotbox for many hours. But personally, I've had a very different experience. I'm one of those health nuts who will actually order the grilled chicken burger, which is another menu item that is very rarely ordered. But when I order it, it does take a bit longer, because the staff will get a frozen grilled chicken out and cook it up. Thus, it's cooked fresh, but I may have to wait 6-10 to 10 minutes for my order. A staff member on this Mashed video claimed a similar case. As a staff member, Justin seemed to take great offence at the Philado Fish Burger being called unfresh. His comment said, I'm an ex-worker and it depends on location. We never let billet patties sit in the warmer too long. When we hear someone order rare items like fish or grilled chicken in the drive-thru, we immediately start cooking it so it's fresh when they receive it. Not every McDonald's is bad. But if the fillet of fish burger is so disliked, why is it even still made? It's not like they turn it into chili like Wendy's, it seems like it's mostly just wasted. Apparently though, the fillet of fish even predates the Big Mac. It all has to do with some people's religion. You see, back in 1948, many Christian Catholics would abstain from eating meat on Fridays, as well as during their 40-day Lent. But apparently, their teachings were fine with them still going for fish. McDonald's noticed that other fast food chains sold more fish during Lent and Fridays. So the fillet fish was introduced. And apparently, to this day, it still sells very well during Lent. And next up, number two, frappes and ice creams. If you haven't had one before, the frappe is basically the more indulgent version of the iced coffee. A sweetened bitter blend of iced coffee with cream on top. But for McDonald's and Starbucks employees, they tend to say steer clear of the frappe. Although they may look and taste okay, staff claim they're not as high quality as your standard iced coffee. The obvious calorific mess aside, they apparently have very little in terms of coffee. When I asked my community on Twitter, Mira, an employee of Starbucks said, these are not only a pain in the butt to make, but they also have very little coffee in them. In terms of nutrition, they're basically a milkshake. They are fine as a treat, but as your daily dose of caffeine, forget it. And some staff claim the ice cream machines are a whole concern in themselves. Supposedly, some frappe and soft serve machines are just a mouldy mess, according to a staff member named Jordan. I can say with certainty that a lot of McDonald's stores don't have anyone properly trained to clean them. Thus, there is always a build-up of mouldy sundae mix in the machine. And Jordan isn't the only one to make these claims about the soft serve machines. When I went looking, there were a lot of photos and complaints on the cleanliness of these machines. Back in 2017, a McDonald's employee shared some photos of a tray in the machine he was meant to refill. And yeah, it does look pretty gross. But in my personal opinion, I don't think this is a problem in most soft serve machines. Back in the day, I also worked as a barista and I cleaned many frappe and coffee machines. And even the dirtiest ones I saw, well they weren't going to cause you actual harm. Also, keep in mind, the soft serve machine is regularly broken or being serviced because it's regularly in its 4 hour cleaning mode. The process is well known enough to be highly frustrating to most people, and it seems to be happening all the time. So it does get cleaned and sanitized during this period, otherwise it would just keep going and never stop. Though maybe this 4 hour clean is skipped on a busy night in some restaurants, I don't know. 
But after researching this, I think it has more to do with the hygiene standards of the restaurant you go to. If the restaurant you go to looks like it's poorly kept and cleaned, maybe skip that soft serve. If the soft serve machine is regularly broken, that's probably a good sign they regularly clean it. And if you're not sure, just ask a staff member. It's a perfectly fair question to ask. Also, remember our old buddy that posted that disgusting tray pic? Well, here he is a few days later enjoying a soft serve, so, you know, go figure. Number 1. Fast Food Ice of all the staff complaints, this one may be the most uncomfortable. Because the amount of complaints I found on ice machines in fast food restaurants is pretty staggering. Even in my own comments, I found Kiara who was a Krispy Kreme staff member. Their comment was... I don't think I'll ever drink the coffee from Krispy Kreme. I heard they don't change the ice chest. And this was just one of many, many comments and articles throughout the internet. Even news sites like WCNC ran articles looking at the health concerns of ICE. Their video claimed that ICE could make you sick if the machine is badly cleaned. While I personally don't think it's likely you'll get sick, their reporter Bill had been combing through health reports looking at violations. And the violation that came up far too often was pink or black buildup in the ICE machine. The BBC even did a study of their own on ice in 2017. And among 30 restaurants, more than half their ice samples were contaminated with fecal coliform bacteria. Oh, hell no! A similar experiment was done by the Daily Mail in 2013. They collected ice from 10 well-known fast food chains. These were their results. Unfortunately, 6 out of 10 locations ice cubes were contaminated, with higher bacteria than the water samples taken from their toilets. Oh, either their toilets are really pristine clear, or their ice machines really need to be cleaned more often. I'm guessing the latter. You know, technically, this may mean the ice machine is cleaned less often than the fast food floor you walk on. Not that I recommend touching a fast food floor with anything but your shoes. It's such a health concern for some people, there are even entire organizations dedicated to restaurant ice safety, such as safeice.org, which has a pretty huge number of news articles on ice health violations. But I have to say, despite this, don't fret if you do get a few extra ice cubes in your drink. It still wouldn't be huge levels of bacteria, and it's unlikely to give you anything beyond a stomach ache. I just think we should expect better from some of these restaurants. If you are curious, take a little look at the ice coming out of the chute at your local fast food joint. According to the health department, keep an eye out for pink, black or brown in your ice, as these colors are signs that the ice machine is not very regularly cleaned. You can also look at the health reports of your restaurant to see if ice has ever been a violation. However, with wholesale ice, you're likely to get a much cleaner experience, as wholesale ice is overseen by the FDA and the Department of Agriculture. It's just held to a much higher standard than restaurant ice. So if this is something that's concerned to you, just take a look for brown or pink in your ice. Or just request no ice with that drink. After research, I don't worry about pink slime in my nuggets. I worry about pink slime in my ice. But, you know, don't lose sleep over this. And if you think I missed a bad fast food that should be avoided, or you just have your own silly story to tell, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and hopefully I might see you next time. Today's member question is from Taylor222222. I think it's eight twos. They ask, do you have any other hobbies you enjoy or just like to wind down to? Question is for both Nin and me. I mean, obviously, I like juggling to relax, but I also like to relax running in the forest. I train for two to three marathon races a year if I can. Nin and I regularly like to hike in the mountains too. It's very calm and tranquil out there. But often at night, I'll just relax at the computer playing a silly game like Plants vs. Zombies or Bloons Tower Defense 6 while listening to one of the YouTube channels I like. But Nin and I are also currently learning sign language. I can't speak for Nin, but I know one of her favorite ways to unwind is petting her cat Shadow. He's a cutie, so he appears on my social media a lot. 